Cinematic Universe is the biggest franchise in the history of the movie industry, and not just in terms of box office numbers. The sheer amount of characters in the MCU is greater than any other movie series could ever boast. There is so much work that goes into creating a movie character, particularly those in comic book world. In terms of aesthetics though, there is usually already a base to work from. The possibilities in a universe boasting aliens, talking trees, and completely unrealistic tech are literally endless. Naturally, this results in an immeasurable amount of character designs ultimately left out in favour of the final product. Whether these ideas evolve into what we ultimately see or get scrapped altogether for something entirely different, good ideas will always get left behind. Sometimes this is to make way for great ideas, but just as often we're left wondering what went into thinking they shouldn't be included. I am Kirsten from What Culture, and these are 12 MCU characters who almost looked way cooler. Number 12, Zemo. After Captain America's greatest ever villain was utilised in the first Avenger, and Hydra and Bucky took the antagonistic lead in the Winter Soldier in Red Skull's absence, there was only one villain who could step in for Civil War, Helmut Zemo. Of course, there was a huge amount of intrigue and excitement surrounding the character's MCU debut, and while he was a strong villain, he was certainly subject to a lot of the Russo brothers' creative liberty. These changes were made to better suit the MCU. He was made to be Sokovian, he was motivated by the tragic loss of his family, and and held a grudge against the entire Avengers team rather than just Cap. One of the biggest changes was the lack of Zemo's trademark purple hood. It's a justified change, but anyone who says they weren't disappointed by not seeing a comic accurate version of the character isn't being honest with themselves. Thankfully, we can look forward to the classic look in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but we almost saw it in 2016, and it would have been epic. Number 11, Dormammu. Though Case Silius acted as the main antagonist for the majority of Doctor Strange in 2016, it was ultimately revealed that he was merely acting on behalf of Dormammu of the Dark Dimension. The latter is certainly a more recognisable name to the comic book fans than Mads Mikkelsen's character, however when he made his appearance on screen, it didn't quite mimic the source material. One of the key themes throughout the entire movie was an unmistakable psychedelic feel, and that's clearly what the designers went for with Dormammu's giant, almost hypnotic face. Though he was the ruler of the Dark Dimension, Dormammu was almost made to look more human. Instead of a giant floating head, the character would have had a humanoid body, with arms and legs, while still keeping the weird factor dulled at 10 with his head seemingly fading into nothingness. This design is almost reminiscent of someone like the Living Tribunal, who was name-dropped in the movie itself and would have almost seemed more intimidating since he would not have needed a giant body to destroy Strange over and over. This could have even been just one form that the character chose to show Doctor Strange, reflecting on the beings of the particular planet he was invading at the time. Number 10, Gamora. When Guardians of the Galaxy was released in 2014, the team and the individual characters themselves were strangers to even some of the most hardcore comic fans. Though Gamora may have had the greatest chance of being recognised thanks to her role alongside Adam Warlock in his pursuit of the Soul Stone, she was still relatively unknown. With no preconceptions or expectations of the character, the designers may have had more licence to play with Gamora's look than with others. However, Zoe Saldana's character was ultimately kept very aesthetically close to her comic counterpart. The approved design at one stage, however, peppered Gamora's alien green skin with a blue, almost tribal pattern, not dissimilar to that of Drax's. It makes her seem somehow more fearsome and intimidating, suggesting even more intrigue into her mysterious past. Are all of Gamora's species like this, or are these scars? Perhaps the result of her childhood, constantly in battle with her sister. Number 9, Valkyrie. As far as MCU entrances go, there have been some simply incredible scenes over the years. Star-Lord dancing across Morag, and of course Thanos' destruction of the Asgardian ship come to mind. Another character who had a simply awesome welcoming to the franchise was Valkyrie. After Thor crash landed on Sakaar, Valkyrie came to collect him and deliver him to the Grand Master. Not only did she immediately demonstrate what a badass she was, she showed off her comedic chops as well. As good as it was, it was almost even better. The future member of the Revengers was almost given a mask for when we first met her, with the addition of two kick-ass mace gauntlets. Though the weapon that she was ultimately given to defeat her competition for Thor was incredible, it wasn't quite fighting off a horde of scavengers with maces for fists, was it? Number 8, Drax the Destroyer. 
Even before Guardians of the Galaxy had a solid script in place, work began on the design of the movie's main characters. In particular, Drax the Destroyer proposed a unique challenge in that his comic book design was very similar to that of Kratos from the God of War gaming series. Without Drax's story set in stone, Marvel Studios director of visual development Andy Park lent the character his own story for one design. In a backstory similar to what would ultimately be Nebula's, the Destroyer would have been biologically enhanced in a bid to make him an even deadlier killing machine. Throughout the first movie, Drax was a murdering machine and one of the most feared inmates in the kiln. After some time in the MCU, however, this reputation almost melted away as the character became primarily comic relief. There was nothing inherently wrong with this, however this badass design could have possibly kept the character as intimidating as he always was, even with the comedy aspect still there. Number 7. Ronan the Accuser Less than a year after Thor The Dark World painfully disappointed in the villain department, Guardians of the Galaxy followed suit with Ronan the Accuser. The Kree warlord with the passionate hatred of Xandar had the potential to be a strong character, but fell way short of expectation. Ultimately acting as a puppet of the hand of the mad titan Thanos, Ronan came off as little more than a bratty teenager. Even with his second appearance in Captain Marvel, the character was unable to offer anything new or leave any kind of lasting impression. Would a different design have made Ronan a good character? No, but it certainly would have gone a long way towards helping. This concept art shows the accuser as a physically dominating, intimidating specimen who wouldn't have needed Thanos to fight his battles for him. This would have given another dimension to Ronan, and at least a base for building a stronger character. Number 6. The Hulk after taking a Quinjet and leaving the Avengers behind without so much as a goodbye, neither Bruce Banner nor the Hulk were seen for two years. The huge green rage monster wouldn't turn up until Thor Ragnarok, where it was revealed he'd been living on Sakaar for two Earth years, and who knows how many Sakarian years. With so long between being seen, Marvel Studios could have taken any number of directions with the Hulk's appearance, and though ultimately what we got was not so different from what we were used to, it could have been a lot different. The design team played around with a bunch of potential hairstyles for the strongest Avenger, presumably to be kept up by Stanley's hilarious character in the movie. We could have had buzz cut Hulk, bearded Hulk, or even a Hulk that vaguely resembled John Wick with long locks and some glorious facial hair. Nothing would have driven home that Hulk was now his own person than by having him actually care about and put time and effort into his appearance. Number 5. Nebula Sticking with the idea of hair, there was another character that almost looked completely different thanks to a different do. Very few in the MCU have been through more of a journey than Nebula, and though she started life in the franchise as a villain, the five years between Thanos and Tony snaps saw her grow into a full-on superhero. There was an idea for Avengers Endgame, however, to show the character as she had been before her adoptive father pulled her apart and then put her back together again. There has been plenty of concept art showing what Nebula almost looks like, and while we can be thankful some of them didn't make the final cut, there was one version where she has half of her head shaved bald with long hair on the other side. It may sound strange, but for an alien from beyond the stars, it would have suited her perfectly, and would have looked incredibly cool. Number 4. Mantis with the Guardians of the Galaxy and established team, James Gunn's sequel in 2017 added a key new piece to the roster. Introduced almost as Ego's assistant, Mantis had wonderfully strange powers and a more than unique look to go with them. So much so that Drax went out of his way to tell her how hideous she was several times. Aside from the Atenai, the character's look is completely different to how she was introduced in the comics. For the movie, the design leaned more on the look of a bug, rather than just a human with antennae. There was a design before Pom Clementif was ever cast that would have gone even more in the direction of the praying mantis for which the character is named. The antennae would have been even more insect-like, her colour a more sickly yellow and the face more textured and almost scaly. This would have given Drax the Destroyer even more ammo with which to make Mantis feel bad about her appearance. Number 3. Vision Much like in Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2, Age of Ultron saw the titular team add to its ranks. The newest member came thanks to a vibranium body made by Ultron, Jarvis's AI system, and a blast of lightning from Mjolnir. Vision soon proved himself worthy of trust from his teammates by lifting Thor's hammer. The character's design is in a similar style to his comic book counterpart, only without the brilliant yellow and green additions. The red on its own is a strong look for the robot formerly known as Jarvis, but there was a point in time where he would have been gold. This would have lent Vision the aura of an almighty being even more so than the red, and would have suited a body Ultron was making for himself slightly more. The concept art, however, shows a blue stone on Vision's forehead. Since the Tesseract was never going to be what powered the character, the yellow of the Mind Stone may have clashed with the gold somewhat, but still would have lent him a more regal look. Number 2. Ultron 
After Loki's show-stealing performance in Avengers Assemble, the Earth's mightiest hero's next villain had a lot to live up to. Much of the character was changed from the source material, from his origin to his story and even his personality. His look, however, was kept relatively familiar. There is something of a theme throughout this list of underwhelming villains that could have had a much stronger, more intimidating look. Ultron was no different. Though there was nothing particularly wrong with the robot's design, it could have been better. This tweak design wouldn't have stopped Ultron's snide remarks about making omelettes and vomiting in his own mouth, but it would certainly have allowed him to strike more fear into the Avengers and the audience. All it would have taken is a splash of molten red within Ultron's head, behind his eyes, and potentially flowing through his entire body, and it would have completely changed the way that we look at him. Number 1. Spider-Man Ever since Tom Holland's MCU debut in 2016, there has been a rampant debate among fans over which iteration of Spider-Man is the very best. Of course, each have their own ups and downs, but one of the biggest pros in Holland's column is the tech that Spidey has access to thanks to Tony Stark. In Homecoming, the web-slinger got to play around with all the different gadgets afforded to him by his mentor and father figure, including different types of webbing, a built-in AI system, and of course, instant kill mode. However, above all of this, one of the most exciting prospects of Peter Parker exists in a shared universe was without question the Iron Spider costume. Peter's space suit was undeniably cool, a sleeker, shinier version of the suit that he'd already received from Mr. Stark, but nothing could have been better than the bright red and brilliant gold Spider-Man outfit straight from the pages of the comic books. And there you go, the 12 MCU characters who almost looked way cooler. But let us know your favourites down below in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. But for now, I have been Kirsten Rhea from What Culture, and I will see you in the next video.